सहनावतु सहनव भुनक्तु सह वीर्यं करवावहै तेजस्विनावधि तमस्तु मावित्विशावहै इ ओम शांति 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 ही ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे ति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम वत्व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्तये नमः अज्ञानते मिरांदस्य ज्ञानान जनशलाकया चक्षुरं मिलितयेन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः We'll chant from verse number eight. भेद भावना सोहमित्य सो भावना भिदा भावनी मता भाव शून्य सद भाव सुस्थिति भावना बलाद भक्ति रुत्तमा रुत्सले मन स्वस्थता क्रिया भक योग बो धाश्च निश्चितम् वायु योधनात् लीयते मन जाल पक्षिवत् रोध साधनम् चित्तवायवस चित्क्रियायुदा शाखयोद्वयि शक्ति मूलका लय विनाशने उभयरोधने लय गतम पुनर भवति नौमृतम भेद प्राण बंधनात लीनमानसम एक चिंतनात नाशमेत्यद नष्ट मानसो कृष्ट योगिन कृत्य मस्तिकिम स्वस्थितिम यत नष्ट मानसो कृष्ट योगिन कृत्य मस्तिकिम स्वस्थितिम यत कर्तुराग्नया प्राप्यते बलम कर्म किम परम कर्म तच्छेदम नष्ट माना सहा और डी पर्सन हु हैज अंडरस्टूड डी रियलिटी ऑफ डी माइंड फॉर हिम माइंड इज जस्ट एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट टू फील टू नो टू इंटरेक्ट विद डी एक्सटर्नल वर्ल्ड और डेट पर्सन there are two characters, two words for him. He is a swasthitim yataha. He is abiding in himself and krutyamastikim. There is nothing to be done for this person. Swasthitim yataha means one who knows himself. And that is how the mind is falsified. That is how the mithyatvam of the mind is discovered. This is being further discussed in the next two shlokas. We will see the same, those shlokas today. But one who is abiding in himself means one who knows oneself to be satchit anandaha. And therefore, pratyamastikim nastikim. There is nothing to be done for him. Nothing to be done means what? Last time I told you there are two types of doing. One, I have to do 
because of there is a sense of doership. The sense of doership is centered on upadi, upadi tadat. I take myself to be husband or wife or a brother or a sister or a cousin or a son or a daughter, etc. Since I take myself to be one of that, or a Brahmana or a Kshatriya or so and so, there is a sense of doership. Culturally, there are few things to be done. We are given that samskaras from our parents that you should be doing this, not doing that. And our Shastra also tells this Brahmana should do, daughter should do, etc. Then there is a doership. A doership is always related to one of the roles that I play. And when I take the role to be real, I have to do. That is one thing. Krutyam, Kartavyam is born out of roles. Mostly, the doing is born out of enjoyership, bhokta. There are so many things I want. Desire is usually born out of the from to achieve something, to get rid of something. Why? To be happy, to be comfortable, to be at home with myself, to be complain free. There is some agenda, some complaint, some dissatisfaction that one can be free from that sense of dissatisfaction. Therefore, I have to do these things. That, so, that sense of incompleteness to do something is born out of a desire and the desire is generally or often born out of sense of insufficiency sense of incompletement, incompleteness. And this sense of being insufficient, sense being incomplete, sense that I am not at home, sense that I am not happy, is centered on I. It is with reference to I. And that I is ignorant. Of. However exalted desire may be, you know, it may be a desire to serve the country. That is savior psychology. <laughs> I want to save everybody. I want to work for everybody. Or even a desire to go to Vaikun Lok. I want to go there. Why I want to go? I want to see the Lord. Having had the, I want his darshan. That will give me fulfillment. That means I am not fulfilled now. I have to gain that. A however exalted the desire may be, but that is born out of sense of unfulfillment and that sense of unfulfillment centered on I is born out of ignorance. There is nothing wrong in seeking Lord. There is nothing wrong in surrendering yourself to some higher goal, to samasti, for the well-beings of others. For when that to you work without expecting even any recognition, that's good, nothing wrong in it. But then the difference is this desire to do good can be born out of incompleteness and can be born out of completeness. What kind of it is? Last time I think I told example, a doctor may open a hospital. That he opened the hospital and takes less charges. And Swami opening a hospital. <laughs> it is out of fullness. I happen to do something. I have to do something till the Prarabdha is there. I, like Swami Shivananji started that. It was out of fullness. So, Krutya Mastikim. That desire which is centered on, which is caused by self-ignorance which is centered on self-insufficiency, insufficiency is binding desire. Such binding desires are missing for this person. There is no binding. Out of fulfillment, he or she does. Two, 
if we, whatever he or she feels like doing, depending upon the situation in which he or she is placed into. He takes a call and feels like doing, and therefore he does it. So a wise man is full within, he is full in being with himself only and equally full without, equally full in being with the world. Very beautifully described by Bhagavan Shankaracharyaji in a Bhajagovind. There is one shloka where he says, Yoga rato va, bhoga rato va, sanga rato va, sanga vihinaha. The person may be yogarata or bhogarata or sangarata, maybe with the come in the company of the people, working in society, taking up one project after another, one initiative after another. Sangarato va sanga vihinaha. Maybe without any company, just by himself living a life of self-quarantine, <laughs> self-isolation, not corona-quarantine, but then the person is self-quarantine, lives in Himalayas, lives in a cave, and just does the work of only nothing but taking viksha. Sangha vihina. Important is, yes, third line, the fourth line, yasya brahmani ramate chittam Nandati Nandati Nandateva Yasya Chittam Brahmani Ramate One who abides in Brahman, one who has discovered himself to be Satyam Gana Mananta Brahma or Satchidananda Brahma, he is Nandati Nandati Nandateva. He rejoices, rejoices and rejoices. It all depends upon the prarabdha of his body. The prarabdha with which he or she is born and that body has some prarabdha. And the prarabdha takes him to that situation and he just flows. It is said that in Vivek Chiramani says, prarabdham pushyati vapuhu. Prarabdha pushis. <laughs> it is not English pushyati, okay? <laughs> pushis. I converted Sanskrit into English. It is pushyati means prarabdha nourishes the body. Karma phala nourishes. Sometimes he is, he is with a, he's on his own and nobody knows and Prarabdha takes him to the glory or name and fame or with, with the people or without people. He doesn't bother. Whatever is my Prarabdha, I just flow with this. I don't mind in flowing with it. In other words, no external situation. No external activity, no external involvement or withdrawal can displace his knowledge. And that knowledge is, I am Ananda. That means what? No external situation can displace his Ananda. He is happy in just being wherever he or she is. An ignorant person is happy in becoming. We live a life of becoming. We human life is a life of constant journey. We are travelers. That way every jiva is a traveler. <laughs> Travels from one unit to another unit. At least in a train or in a flight, there is a last flight when the it terminates and the plane is put into the hangar for day or whatever it is. It is there, but here that doesn't happen. From one stop to another, same in like I was told by one of the pilots, that same plane goes to about eight, ten places in India. From here to here and now the same thing is changed to another one. Like uh, olden days bus routes, you know, they change the board and the bus goes somewhere else, <laughs> then change the board. Similarly, you change the upadi and keep traveling. Travel to become. 
What you want to become, Yamaraja says, Yatha karma yatha shutam. According to karma and karma phala, desires, whatever may be aspirations and whatever may be your karma, the combination of two gives the body in that particular yoni and then further male or female, further to that parent, further to that place, further to that situation, all that is travel. Jiva, and even while we live as a human being, our life is life of becoming. There is a travel in space, travel in time, but we travel in objectivity. I, what kind of objectivity? When I was a kid, I want to grow old. I want to become big. When I grew a little old, I want to become teenage. When I'm teenage, I want to become young. When I become young, I want to become successful. Some ideal picture of success. I want to become that. And that in that process, one thing crops up that I will be successful if I get married. Then having gotten married, I want to be a parent. Then success, this vision of success, the vision of ideal life keeps shifting. That is life of becoming. Wise person lives a life of just being. Whatever he or she is, wherever he or she is, in whichever condition, situation he or she is, he is happy, rejoices happy. So, ignorant person's life is fraught with prarabdha and purushan. They are struggling. Destiny brings something and your free will wants something else. In case of a wise person, he just surrenders to Brahma. Whatever dest my destiny brings to me, I don't. I just flow with it. I just go with it. That is called Prarabdham Pushyati Vapuri. Prarabdha pushes the body. <laughs> is the body pushes to this place, body pushes to that place. Like that he goes on. And that is why he says, Svasthitim yataha krutyam astikim. And as I said last time, the shloka of Bhagavad Gita, like ocean, he or she is full like an ocean, that the rivers bring lots of water or not, fullness is not displaced. Similarly, Person, Kama Kami, Tatha, Vishaya. So he may get lots of Vishaya Bhogas depending upon the Prarabdha. And he may not get anything. He is happy. Now, having said this, Nashtamana Saha, what exactly does it mean destroying the mind? And how to destroy the mind that is being talked about in next two verses? Let's look at the verse number 16 and 17. We will change these two verses twice, okay? Together, verse number 16 and 17. Drashya varitam chittam atmana chitvadarshanam tatvadarshanam Manasam tu kim margane krute naiva manasam marga arjava drashya varitam chittamatmana chitva darshanam tatva darshanam manasam tu kim margane krute Naiva manasam marga arjava. Old Shastra is talking something different. See, earlier while introducing, Tattva Bodha had told. There are two types of problems 
I mean, three types of problems in human life. But basically, it is only one problem that gives rise to twofold problems. What are they? First problem is situational problem. You are met with some difficult situation. You are faced with certain facts which are unpleasant, which are discomforting which are creating uncertainties. That's a fact, situational problems. You don't have a job and that too you are in America. Or you are not happy with the job. The boy and you want to change the job and you don't get a job. It's a situational. Of course, nowadays, people very, very few in some very underdeveloped countries have a problem that you don't have food for two square meals like Africa, etc. But that's a situational problem. You don't have food. A typical human is based on situational problem, based on the background of the past and the present, there is a psychological problem. <laughs> this modern days, the society is full of stress. Though the life is much, much more comfortable than before. <laughs> Practically everything is on your fingertip. You know, and whole Amazon is on your fingertip. <laughs> you become Amazon Prime member and keep buying on your fingertip. I know one of my students' son, he was... My, he was a child when his father was attending in classes in Rajkot. He was with G. And when he was, he came back to India and then moved back to US. And he was in Houston. He and his wife bought everything for the house on Amazon. Including wall paintings. Including fixtures. So I said, everything is on fingertip, okay, including your home. <laughs> you can buy a house also <laughs> on fingertips. And of course, we book a house also, Airbnb, that is also on fingertip. You don't go physically, you know, hotel you have to go physically. But in case of Airbnb, there is nobody physically available. A fella gives you password, you pay the money and you enter. <laughs> then you can't get physical Airbnb. Anyway, it's on fingertip. To have a stress is a typical human problem. Anxiety, helplessness, worry, these are all human problems. Have you ever seen a dog having stress? <laughs> Nowadays in India, the street dogs are having lots of problems because nobody feeds them. <laughs> because they don't go out, you know, to feed the dog. And more than that, those lari walas and restaurants walas are not there. The people who throw the garbage out, they used to at least get that food. <laughs> now they don't get. But I have not seen the street dogs in stressed condition. And none of them came and asked me. Which usually every second person who calls me or talks to me asks me. Nowadays everybody asks me from last two days. Formerly were less, now everybody. In a typical Gujarati. So lage hai Swami ji. A corona. What do you think about corona? I said, what do I think? Corona is Corona. What I have to think? I have to think to protect myself and you better think to protect yourself. No, 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 no. That's not a question that I'm taking. A cautionary measure. But how long this lockdown will continue? What do you think the future of the economy? How do you think? Do you think Modi is doing right thing? That anxiety is with human. And this anxiety is universal. Please understand another thing. In one of these yoga camps, I inauguration, I said, you know, this 
our Shastra is called Sanatana, eternal. Our Dharma is called Vedic Dharma or Sanatana Dharma because it addresses the eternal problem. The relative problem is eternally same and the absolute problem is also same. Only this problem caused by external situation keeps changing from time to time and from person to person. You may have different problems. There was no corona issue in last century. But there was the issue of Spain flu. <laughs> there was the issue of cholera and malaria and tuberculosis. They were there, so they changed. But then universal psychological problems are universal. Anxiety, stress, apprehensions, worry, uncertainties, all universe. It has nothing to do with even religion. Christian stress is different from Hindu stress. And Hindu stress is different from Muslim stress. No, human mind is same. That every human mind, whether it may be a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim or a Buddhist or Zoroastrian, anyone, that there is a Ravana having a desire, that there is a Duryodhana having jealousy, is always same. This is psychological problem. And there is one fundamental problem called spiritual problem. Please understand, Shastras are addressing the spiritual problem. By the way, it talks about psychological issues. But to talk to psychological issue is not the main topic. It is not the main goal. It is not the main purpose. And these psychological problems get automatically solved because they are based on spiritual problem. And the spiritual problem is, you can put it both ways. What is the spiritual problem? The, it is a philosophy. Actually, right word is darshana. But there is no word in English, so either I use philosophical problem or spiritual problem. That is the darshanic samasya, not manasic samasya, not mental problem. The problem is of darshana, of vision, of, 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 of reality. And what is a darshanic samasya? That you take the mind to be real. And when I take the mind to be real, then all the problem, we first take the mind to be real and then start begin to solve the mental problems of fear, anger, sorrow, anxiety, frustration, despair, all mental problems, then bondage, you try to address them. It means no, you don't need not it. You have to relatively address it. But then Shastra is addressing primarily the spiritual problem that you are taking mind to be real. Whereas it is not exactly like you take a movie problem to be real <laughs> and try to solve the problem. In a movie, I remember when I was young and I used to go to see a movie and then you sit in the balcony but the lower level people, you know, when hero is walking and in a, in a relaxed mood, whistling and enjoying and some goons are coming from behind. That problem is not real. But the fellow sitting in a lower stall will take it real and they used to shout, Hey, look back! They are coming! Look back! They are coming! <laughs> they used to shout that because they take it to be real. You take the mind to be real. 
and then work on addressing your anxieties and fear and sorrow and stress and all kinds of things, anger and, and hurt and everything. Through relatively, you should be free and then Shastra helps us, that is Yoga Shastra. But then Brahma Vidya reduces this problem to the level of the problem on the screen. The reality of the mind is removed. And then you just be objective and enjoy the movie. Whatever is going on in the movie, you enjoy it. There is no issue. Let it be so. It is so. Okay, let it be so. It doesn't touch me because I am independent of the seer is independent of what is seen, what is going on in the movie. So he says, Drashyavaritam Chittamatmanaha Chitvadarshanam Tadvadarshan Manasam Tukim Margane Krute Naiva Manasam Marga Look at the verse. Drashyavaritam what chittam? Atma. One's own mind or atmanaha, darshanam, atmanaha can go with darshanam. When the chittam in the mind is withdrawn, varitam, from drashyam, from seeing. When the mind is withdrawn from perception or when the mind is withdrawn from external objects. That is called Drashyavari. Okay. Then what happens? That, that is Chitva Darshanam. Chitva means of awareness. Darshanam. That's a vision of awareness. That's an appreciation of awareness that becomes a knowledge of awareness. And that, that is Tattva Darshanam. That is vision of truth or knowledge of truth, or that is appreciation of truth. The translation would be, when one's own mind is withdrawn from perception, from what is seen, from names and form, then that is the vision of the truth, and because that is a vision of Chitva Consciousness. Please understand the Shloga. Okay? That is pure consciousness when you withdraw the mind from Drashyam. Now, this needs to be understood. People think that means you withdraw and close the eyes. <laughs> when you just close the eyes, You may withdraw from external world, Drashya. Seen. Which scene? Seen through senses. The world that is perceived through senses, you can decide to withdraw. By one decision is I will sit here only. And you just plug in your eyes and ears. <laughs> So you don't see anything. You don't hear anything. But then, the, the drashyam seen through senses is withdrawn, but the mind drashyam continues. <laughs> you just sit there, mind brings in all the objects, exactly like, you know, the airlines, when you travel, there are few uh, that, uh, headphones available. The sound reducer, I forgot its name. You just put it there, there is no sound of airlines engine and things like that. Only when the air hostess asks you, Sir, what will you have in breakfast? That you can hear. 
<laughs> but no other sound you can hear. <laughs> that is that is what they provide. That in those days it used to be too big. Now I am told that new airports have come. The airports that our our this uh, Apple airports, new airports, they reduce the sound also, except the words of a human being. They are good for the flight because they, that big one you have to carry all the way in hand luggage and it is so tight. Put the airports, you have reduced the noise. Listen to this. You put this sound reducer or whatever it is called, you have reduced the noise. But you know which noise? That noise that was coming from outside. But inside is more noisy. <laughs> Mind keeps on creating noise. In a sense, keeps on creating dialogues, remembering those interactions. And there is a noise. Similarly, you may withdraw from the world outside, but inside there is a drashyam. What is drashyam? All your experiences flashback. All your memories, all your ambitions, all your desires, all your imaginations keep coming. So they say hey, that you should withdraw from that also. That means what? You, you should, that, that noise or that perception inside is mental, is in the form of thoughts. Formally, if the perception was through sense organs, that now the perception is created by the mind only. So they say, you should give up all the thoughts. Easier said than done. And when you are thoughtless, that is called drashchittam, drashyavaritam chittam. When you become free from all thoughts, that is that, that means you are free from all kinds of, withdrawn from all kinds of perceptions. Perception, I can use this word, word, not word, word, external perception and internal perception. When you are withdrawn from external as well as internal perception, that is Chitva Darshanam. When you see consciousness, you see awareness. And that is the vision of the truth. And that is, looks true, but that's not the meaning. Please understand. I elaborated all this. It is a Purva Paksha. <laughs> they think if by doing this, you will get Chitva Darshan. And therefore, they try to be thoughtless. And I have told earlier, thoughtless mind is a quiet mind. Quiet mind is not an enlightened mind. Knowledge doesn't take place. Even if you withdraw from the thoughts and there is only consciousness, but you need to recognize this is consciousness. That is me. And that con this consciousness is the cause of the entire creation. And at the, I mean, nothing is separate from consciousness that you need to recognize. And for that, you need a teaching. You need Brahman. Okay? Now, please understand what is the meaning of the Shloka. What I gave you was Vachyartha, the word meaning. But the implied meaning, Lakshartha, we call it, is different. Now, let us understand what is perception. Then we will discuss. What is drashyam? Then we will discuss what is drashyavaritam. What does it mean by withdrawing from drashya? Perception. Sense organs come in contact with the respective sense perception, sense object, and then there is a knowledge. But the process or the prakriya but the methodology of knowledge is what? The perception, drashyam involves two things, the subject and the object. 
and the contact between subject and object causes perception no drashta drashyam and drashta meets the drashyam there is darshanam simple good but then just go one step further when you see something that object that is seen when i say seen means heard or smelled or touch or tasted everything through corresponding sense organ when you taste something through tongue when you hear something through ears when you smell something through nose when you touch something to your hands or any part of the body and when you see something all that means see when you see something there is a corresponding thought formed in the mind and that thought modification or that thought form is seen by you which is incidentally taken place by taken place by operation of a sense organs while waking in contact with the sense objects they give rise to a sense organ eyes coming in contact with the name and form give rise to one particular thought form and that is being seen by you exactly like when you close your eyes and you remember some person or when you close your eyes you remember some place remember some situation remember your car there is no outside car it is in a thought form the thought form whatever obtains in the mind that car is seen suppose i tell you come on visualize a car someone may visualize a toyota company car or someone may visualize a mercedes company car or someone may visualize audi or whatever whatever his background is same thing happens even while waking we think we are seeing an object but we are not seeing an object per se we are seeing the corresponding thought form that has taken place in your mind that is why there is error <laughs> our classic example rajju sarpa the fellow sees a rope in a twilight but then there is a corresponding thought form to place of a snake therefore he says this is snake fellow points out to the same object this is snake eyes had shown the same way as the object is eyes don't show it like a snake the curves were same whatever the rope curve were there that's all eyes recognized but somehow the mind created a vritti thought form of a snake sometimes you know at a distance you see somebody and you could take that person as your known person some mr so and so or miss so and so an acquaintance when you go closer and recognize oh he is not that <laughs> i showed the same height same thing but somehow the thought form here to place of that corresponding person so that is called thought form corresponding to the object in the shastrik language it is called idam vritti thought form is called vritti that i aham vritti sees this idam vritti okay now <laughs> these are the, the uh, and then there is a knowledge that i saw a snake like suppose he happens to see a snake he will say snake. suppose other person says i saw a rock rock third person say no 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 that i saw a garland one garland was lying over there whatever is seen here in the thought form but then all these are not separate from consciousness if that was away from the thought of an object that 
Vishakara vritti idam vritti, if it were away from you, the consciousness, you would not have recognized it. You, it is right within your consciousness. Idam vritti is in consciousness and seer also is in consciousness. They are not separate from consciousness in any which way. Now, please understand. What does it mean by Trashyavaritam? When we see this thought, our attention is focused on that name and form. But we miss the consciousness. Exactly like when the attention in a movie is fixed on the name and form, hero or heroine or villain or some scene or some dialogue or something. Then what you miss, as they say, you miss the obvious that is light. None of them are away from light. Hero is within light. Heroine is within light. Not only hero and hero in that garden in which they are running around. I'm talking of Indian movie. <laughs> and the tree which is there. And they are circling the tree. Both of everything is within light. You can say everything is nothing but the play of light. In one form, in one color, one name is hero, the same light. Another form is heroine, third form is garden, fourth form is car, fifth form is dog, sixth form is other people etc, etc. Drashyavaritam, withdrawing from the scene, means name self. When you, you know, withdraw from the name and from form, hero and heroine, you see the light that is consciousness. It is similar to, you know, you can say, in spite of seeing the hero, you can reduce the hero, heroine, entire movie, to a play of light. Nothing is away from it. In a technical words, I can say everything being superimposed upon the light. Light is away from that, but they are not away from light. And light is asangaha. <laughs> light is untouched. Suppose there is a fire, <laughs> light doesn't get burnt. Suppose there is a shootout, and few characters die in that movie, light doesn't die. You know? Suppose there is a windstorm or there are heavy floods, everything is drenched in water, light doesn't get drenched. Understand? That is you. Listen to this verse now. Nainam chindanti shastrani, nainam dahati pavak. Electricity, light is not burnt when there is a burning. It is not destroyed. Nainam chindanti shastrani, nainam dahati pavak. Nachainam kledayantapaha, water cannot drench it, wet it. Anachanashoshayati maruka, wind cannot dry it. Drashyavaritam is similar to this withdrawing from the name and form and seeing the substrate, seeing the very truth of it. Similarly, I can reduce all my thoughts to nothing but play of consciousness. It is a play of light very beautifully mentioned by, I, though I'm sorry I cannot translate in English, or when Gujarati poet wrote it very beautifully. Brahma Lataka Kare Brahma Sar. Light plays with the light. <laughs> hero is a light, heroine is also light. Villain is also light. That is called Lataka Kare Brahma. Jagine Jyoto Jagatati Se Nahi Ungama Atapata Bodhava. 
So in sleep, I see. In sleep means when I give reality to names and form. When my attention is focused only to the image form. When it is withdrawn, Jagwar. Jagadadi se. Brahma latka kare Brahma sate. When I withdraw from names and forms of the heroine, heroine, I see the whole movie. Three years movie. I mean, three hours movie for which I paid is nothing but play of light <laughs> in one form or other. And then that is called Drashyavan. Reducing every thoughts to consciousness. That is withdrawal. Withdrawing your mind, withdrawing yourself from name and form, not literally you have to withdraw. Exactly like you withdraw from the wave. See the water. You need not withdraw all the waves. You need not stop all the waves. That is called withdrawing all the waves, then you see the ocean. It's never going to happen. <laughs> when all waves stops, I will see the ocean. That is like, you know, people saying, and all the thoughts are given up, the consciousness will surface. It's never going to. That I want to give up thoughts itself is a thought. <laughs> and I have given up all the thoughts is also a thought. <laughs> Suppose you give up all the thoughts, then you recognize I am thoughtless. That is a thought. <laughs> it is also a thought. How are you going to be thoughtless? So, hoping that when I withdraw from Drasham, I will see the consciousness. That's not a point. It is like what it says, you just no necessary to reduce or destroy all the waves. You just recognize and reduce all the waves to water. Let there be many waves, you enjoy the waves. Let there be thoughts in the mind, you enjoy the thoughts. Generally, you know, when you take the wave to be real, take to be the one wave takes itself to be real, other wave to be real, third wave to be real, and then there is a problem. This bigger wave is bullying me, and this smaller wave is not listening to me. Right? There is this whole problem is born out of thinking because you are giving reality to the wave. You are giving reality to the thoughts. But then you reduce the thoughts to the level of consciousness. That is called Drashyavarikam. Then there is no problem. When we first accept the mind as real, and then creates, try to solve the problems of the realities. None of the thought inside has existence away or apart from consciousness. Like even none of the ornaments made out of gold has existence away from the gold. Just withdraw from the names and forms and you recognize the gold. That is called Drashyavaritam Chittam Atmanah Chitradarshan. It's a vision of the consciousness. And in order to see the I, there is no necessity to dismiss the thoughts. Recognize that these vrittis are mithya. I mean, they exist on consciousness. Mithya means what? That which is because of something else. Chain is mithya. When I say chain is mithya, I don't say chain is not there. Please don't misunderstand. Somebody, even the, our ex-president Radhakrishnan, who was a philosophy professor of Madras University, head of the department and then vice chancellor, had written, they said, this world is so beautiful and Vedanta is literally dismisses of mithya. I am not saying it is not beautiful. I am not saying it is beautiful, enjoy it. But then what I am saying is, it, when I say mithya, that means I am talking about the reality. What is mithya? That which exists because of something else. That doesn't stand on its own legs. It is on a borrowed existence. 
Ornament is beautiful. Bengal is beautiful. Chain is beautiful. Necklace is beautiful. Design is extraordinary. Carving is extraordinary. That's fine. But then that necklace cannot exist, cannot be without gold. That's all I call beauty. I'm not dismissing the beauty. I'm not dismissing the craftsmanship. Very subtle craftsmanship is involved. I appreciate that. But then the whole blessed thing is because gold. That's all I'm trying to say. So when we dismiss the mind as mithya, that means mind is because of consciousness. That consciousness is me. And that mind that which is because of something else is mithya. That means mind is superimposed on me. Chitva darshanam atman. That's all. It is a superimposition. That means see the fact that thoughts are apparent. Thoughts are nothing but the name and form. This is the vision of truth. The, exactly like the vision of water flows in all the waves. Even when the wave is, the vision flows. Wave dies down, and the vision flows. The new wave is born, the vision flows. It doesn't change, even though the vision of awareness that is, that is in and through, that permeates all the thoughts, doesn't change or doesn't go away because all the thoughts are superimposed on one awareness and that is you. That's all. That is a spiritual vision. Thoughts just, just cannot cover the consciousness. Understood? The submarine philosophy thinks that consciousness is covered. Even this koshas cannot cover. Taking them to be real makes them kosha. Nothing else. Consciousness, like it is saying the snake covers the rope. In a way, true, but it cannot cover. That is also true. Snake can never cover the consciousness. At the same time, Snake seems to be covering the rope because you happen to see only snake, not the rope, which is a substratum upon which the rope snake is superimposed. That is Trashyavadi. When you withdraw from that and recognize the consciousness, which is in and through the thoughts, which is there before the thought and which is there after the thought. And which is there when the thought is. So, Tattva Darshanam, Atma Darshanam. Understand? I'll, it will come further, but this is what Bhagavatam is. This Kadhakara, they have Ras Leela. They talk of Ras Leela often. But you know what is Ras Leela? <laughs> there are so many gopis, but there is one, only one Krishna to begin with. They say Krishna was in the center and played his flute and Ras started. And these gopis wanted the proximity with Krishna. And each one got a Krishna. You will see two pictures. One Krishna standing in between and another Krishna between two gopis. So they say, Angana, Angana, Antare, Madhava. Angana means gopi. Antare, Angana, Angana, Antare. Between the two gopis, there is Krishna. But the truth is what? Madhava, Madhava, Antare, Angana. <laughs> Between two Krishnas is Gopi. <laughs> exactly like when we were children, 
I still remember the, when the goods train used to pass, you used to count the compart how many goods bogies are there. And it picks up the speed. How do you count? First, you see the compartment, the bogey, and then later on, the space between them. <laughs> then you count the space one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You count the compartment with bogies. Then 11, 12, 13. So, first is bogey, bogey in between space. Now it is space and in between bogey. And later on, it was only space. <laughs> Angana, Angane, Antare, Madhava, then Madhava, Madhava, Antare, Angana, then only Madhava, Madhava, Madhava. All gopis are nothing but his own expression. All the thoughts, first I recognize I am Sakshi consciousness, withdrawing from the mind. Then you recognize. In between every thought is me, the consciousness. Later on, it is the consciousness which appears as this vritti, inam, etc. Nothing is separate from me. That is drashyavarita, withdrawing from drashya. Two things. First, withdrawal from withdrawal from drash, withdrawing from drashyam. That withdrawal is becoming introvert, very quiet. And ultimate spiritual withdrawal is recognizing the drashya as mithya, non-separate from consciousness. They are non-separate from me, the consciousness. They are, let them be whatever it is. It is in its own order. Mind has its own way of thinking. Let it think that way. This is how mind thinks. And I am the conscious which is independent of the mind. Why should I bother? Like the movie, whatever may be the scene, I am independent. Why should I bother? Let it be, enjoy it. And so, some, some Nishta Purusha, you know, so that previous verse he said, you know, and then Swasthitim Yata, those who are abiding in the truth, this, with reference to movie, they enjoy. Even in a tragic scene, when the heroine is weeping, they observe what, you know, her earrings were different. Huh? This, her heroine's earring design is not seen. Her sari was good. <laughs> they remain unaffected. That is called spiritual problem that is called reducing the mind you are to the level you are untouched and then same thing is further explained in verses manasam prakim we will take it up on next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om